new Dot 4 equip and uh, we'll give you a quick walk around and show you some of the features. Uh, the drawbar here is fairly standard. We have gone a little bit shorter. So it's a 1.8 metre drawbar. Uh, the standard trailers have been 2, two metres, so 1.8, a little bit shorter. Um, in this area it's very similar though. All Raptor line, jockey wheel, uh, odds hitch and the handbrake. Uh, stone guard and the rubbish bag on top. These rubbish bags are so good, just in a great spot there. So you'll see a little bit less distance here than on the standard trailers. Big toolbox, uh, plenty of room for your gear. This one's got a battery, and uh, you know we're just running lights on the battery at the moment. But if we we probably put a fridge in here later on, so we've got the battery, BC DC, uh, 240 volt charger, water tank gauge, and uh, all that's there. So you can see how well in here the uh, that's the milk crate bag. Um, lots of bits and pieces in there, and that just fits so nicely in the toolbox. Okay, we've got the wood box here. We had that full of firewood the other day, and we've got one jerry can in there. So we've got room in there for rubbish and lots of things. Uh, side box is standard, and this is the medium canopy as well. So uh, that's all fairly the same. We've got a five leaf pack on there and um, the Alco electric brakes. All right, lots of room in the canopy, all carpet lined, heaps of room for all your gear, a little divider in the middle so you can pack both sides. Uh, we've got a light on the back, a couple of spotlights, starting to do a lot more of these now on, on the trailers, so just two twin spotlights which are great for setting up camp. So there's one on each side there. Now the rack on top is just the rhino rack, it's a short one, it's only about 1200 long. I mean the trailer as a 440 is, is 4 foot by 4 foot, so it's literally 1200 by 1200. So it's quite short. And we've just put two storage boxes in there. It's still got quite a bit of gear, you can see it's full. But the storage boxes are great because it means you can pack it nice and neat. Didn't have the boxes, everything's a bit of a jumbled mess. and. Uh, if we wanted to, this box here is empty at the moment, but we can put a fridge in here. So uh, we might put a little 30 litre ingle in, Cotter. That'd be good, wouldn't it? Yeah, that'd be good. Spare tire on the back. We've painted this one white as well, as you can see. Our standard colours have been silver and green. We've done some black ones, but the white we're doing more of now and they're looking really good. This side's the same. Um, Dot number 213, so yeah, we've built a lot now. We've mod modified a little water area here. Okay, so we've got the water pump. And just watch out of the way, cut, I'll show you the, the pump. So there's a pump there as well, you can hook a hose onto it. So we've yeah, just been able to fit that in. You can see there's not a lot of room, so there's no room for a jerry can holder or a gas bottle. Uh, we don't need a gas bottle with these, running a metho stove in the fire pit but you can fit jerry cans in the front. Max tracks on the front here, and uh, that's about it. Now I'll show you the awning on the other side. Oh, I'll quickly show you in here. We do have uh, the water tank, all right, and uh, you know, there's literally nowhere to run, you know, hoses and stuff, so we've had to run it underneath the drawbar and we've protected it with this uh, section of metal here, and a little guard here as well. And, um, something we're just starting to do now too is, um, Tofty gave us this idea, is to put some mud flaps in front just to protect that stone guard, uh, to protect the water tank. So we'll just get, we're using drifter ones, we're going to get just some blank black ones and that's just going to help protect the undercarriage of the trailer. Have a look around here as well. You can see it. Quick view from the back here. You know, I mean there's a rear hanger on the very edge of the trailer so it was a real juggle to get all this to fit but um, we've managed to, you know, it's a lot of small changes when we when I said to Andrew and Ethan we want to build a four foot trailer you know there was probably a dozen uh, design issues underneath here is why we couldn't fit these springs on and we had to one by one work through all those and uh, make it so it's all going to work 
but we've done that of course and uh, it works great. Alright, big feature is the awning. So this is a new feature which is it's a little bit easier with two but I think I can do it. Okay, so it's pretty simple. And we'll set this awning up. Now you can see how that works. Just lift it up. Um, it's important to be able to get the awning up at the right height. And the reason is, because these are a big awning, you know, a lot of surface area. And it's very important to try and get the runoff. Without runoff, they're just the canvas sags, and you get water pooling, and that just really stretches the canvas. So this enables us to get uh, some extra height. Um, that we can fold it out. The other thing, we had these awnings on some brackets before so they were a little bit higher but then it makes it very hard and awkward to put the awning away when it's up so high. And if you're a little bit shorter it's difficult as well. So this is a new system we've got which uh, lets you adjust the height of the awning. Okay so you can see the awning set up here now. This is our 2.1 meter long uh, 270 degree square back awning. So the difference to the rapid wings is it's got a square back on it, as you can see here. Now we've lifted this up about yeah 200 mils. You can see that we can lift up quite a bit higher, and you can see that, that now gives us a fairly good slope or runoff area. Um, you know we can drop the poles down a little bit lower if we wanted to or we can even raise it up a bit higher as well. But we've got this now to a point where you can walk under nice, you know, without hitting your head, so that's a pretty good height. And we've got plenty of runoff area. So the awnings are great, they cover a lot of space. Very good quality, made in Brisbane. Now two features we've come up with recently, which we didn't have on the early uh, square back awnings, are these two curved spreader poles. Okay, so I'll show you how they work. Uh, it's just a curved uh, spreader rail and we've got some special enzymes. So we've got a crab claw there and we've got a just a flat spigot there really. Okay. Now before what we used to do is just put a rope down here, tie that out. But the problem is getting you know the water off this area. So if you've got one of these awnings from us in the past, the square back, and you want to get these, we've now raised the price a little bit and included these with the awnings. But if you've got an awning in the past, you can buy these from us, no problems. So this is the, uh, the rear curve spreader, and this will be the side curve spreader. Alright, so it sticks in there. Bit of tension. And you can see what that does, just gives a little bit of, you know, domed coverage. The one on this side, slightly different. Okay, you can see it's got a square end on it. Now this is a good thing about manufacturing in Australia with good quality companies because we can talk to the guys, tell them what we want and they can make these up for us to suit, you know, very easily. So this one sits in there and on this end it's a, a C-clip spreader. So clips on there, just like that. Okay, so again if you've got one of these awnings, they won't work on the rapid wings but on the square back awnings you know, we could post these out, they're only about 50 bucks each or something. We can send them to you and that'll make a big difference to your awning. Alright, kind of doing a bit of drone coverage. And uh, that's the little dot four. So, uh, yeah, quite similar to the other five and the, the five and the six equipped. A couple of new features. And uh, all of these new features we're showing will be on all the new trails as well. So. Alright, thanks very much.